Hi guys! So today is Wednesday, so I will be doing two different videos today. Um, yes, my hair is down today because my brother suggested to wear it down, but let's see how long it lasts. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do pork chops and um, scallop potatoes. I'm going to try to see. I don't really have a recipe, but I'm kind of kind of measured out some stuff, so hopefully it'll work. Um, so I did my mandolin, um, I think that's what it's called, cutter. This was the one that I bought from Tupperware. And I already cut most of them, but I just wanted to cut a couple just to show you what it looks like. Let me show you. So again, there is a very sharp blade in there, so you have to be very careful. And you just run it. I go pretty fast at first just because, you know, it's, it's got a good amount to go. But once I start getting to the closer and closer, and someone keeps texting me, I'm sorry. Once I get closer, then I watch my fingers, of course. And I did do both um, gold and red potatoes, because I don't know why I like the combination of both of them together. And I don't like Idaho or Russet for some reason, but these I love. Cheyenne, can you do me a favor yeah. and rinse my potatoes for me? So, as you can see, I cut, these are just so beautiful, the color, and you can see how thin they are. <laughs> see, that's pretty thin. But this is probably about, I'm actually not even sure how many potatoes I use. I just bought these bags at Sam's and they're eight pounds each. This is the gold and then these are the red. Um, I want to say I probably used probably about at least two and a half pounds of each maybe at that. So just rinse them under some cold water real, real good. Cool? Yeah. I'm going to close this up and wash this later because I don't usually like the kids to deal with this one, but I love it. It cuts really, really nicely. Move that to the side. So the main reason I brought y'all, wanted to show y'all because like I said, I want to make pork chops and I don't buy pork chops by the package anymore because I like thicker cut pork chops. Sometimes they can cost quite a bit. So what I do is I buy... Get this. I know because you just washed and put them right there. I buy this big boy right here. This is big. It is, <clears throat> this is a whole boneless pork loin and it's $1.98 a pound. And this is about 10, 10 pounds, a little over 10 pounds. I'm not going to cook the whole thing tonight. So what I normally do is cut about half of it or a good portion of it and make a roast with it one night and I'll do some thick cut pork chops with it tonight. So I'm gonna go ahead and unwrap this and show y'all that while I'm gonna get some gloves on because I don't like to touch meat and um, probably put something underneath here because it does, you know, have some juice and stuff in it. But um, I find this to be very easy. It's a nice cut and I try to use the fatty part for when I do the roast because sometimes that uh, renders a little bit better and it uh, gives the, the pork uh, a better taste sometimes. So let me get some gloves. My hands are clean, guys. So like I said, I'm gonna make scalloped potatoes and pork chops, and I'm still not sure what vegetable to make. I'm gonna see what's in my freezer, but I'm pretty sure I will probably do um, maybe some um, mixed vegetables or, um, I think I have mixed vegetables, so I might do that. Or some cauliflower. I think that's what, what else is in there right now. So let's get a cutting board. This is again one of my favorite cutting boards. I think I got this at a flea market in the north side of Fort Worth, and I haven't been able to find another one like it. So it's a very nice cutting board. I love it. It's great gonna put a couple napkins under it so hopefully it doesn't shift around and I got some Ziploc bags ready for my other portion and I wanted to sharpen my knives to make sure they're good and sharp I just don't remember which one I wanted to use let's use this one this one's a 
I think I got this one online. Anyways, well, I hope everyone's having a great um, Wednesday. I'm gonna get a towel as well. busy today. I'm, I had to take my mom to the doctor and then Cheyenne has been home because she's been a little sick I guess. She's just actually been coughing. This allergies you know how it goes. I'm sure y'all have kiddos that are dealing with the same you know when they have asthma they just cough and cough and cough. I know the sucker is huge. That's usually, really usually I cut it up before. I'm gonna. Um, oh, come on, get on there. I cut it up before, and then it looks orange. Or cut the off juice. at least half of it, which is what I'm gonna do. All right. Cheyenne says this ju looks juicy, so. The juice looks like orange. I said that's about half. You want to make sure you have a good, strong, sharp knife when you're cutting because it's very thick to cut through all the way. There we go. All right, so. Like I said, the bigger portion, I'm probably going to make a roast out of that. Will you open up those zip bag for me, baby girl? Cheyenne's going to be my little helper today because she's in here. Open it. Open it, open it. Ooh, I touched it. There we go. I don't like to touch and touch and touch, so I'm going to... Move that aside for right now. Alright, so this is going to be my pork um, for dinner tonight. Like I said, I like to cut pretty good slices for everybody. I feel a little bit of a bone, I think, right here, which they're pretty good about not having them. Like I said, I like to buy this just because I can get two meals out of it and I could cut however thick I want my pork chops. And in this case, I usually like to cut them probably about a good, maybe um, three fourths of an inch big. So that's probably about like right there. Mom, why do you need tips to plug bags then if you're just using Because I didn't know if I was going to need to. This one got some pretty good thick fat at the bottom, so it's a little hard to cut. So sometimes when that happens, I turn it on the back side and cut it on this side. What if that happens again? There we go. So some pieces, of course, will be thicker than the others, and that's okay because that's what I want. I want a thick cut pork chops or pork loin. Like I said, you can roast half of it. That's normally what I do with the rest of it. Just so that way I at least get two meals out of this unless I'm having like a lot of people over. This is great because you can um, cut up your portions and have it for, you know, a party or whatever. Which I think I've done that too before. Or sometimes I will cook the whole thing just because my family likes to eat two pieces a piece and because <laughs> they're, they're good. And I'm actually going to season this with just, um, I like that applewood rub for pork. It's got like that sweet and a lit, not even that much of a spice because I can't handle spice. So it has that sweet and just gives it that nice color and it's just delicious. I have smoked these or kind of like a grilled them on the grill and I put a little bit of wood in there and it gives it that little smoke ring that you're looking for which is great. That's, a, that's just one little cut that's the end but that's a good cut. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I think that's probably a good amount so I don't need to cut any more. 
I might cut one more just because I want it to fit in the bag better. So let me go ahead and do that. Can you just like open the back a little bit and cut it? I could, but that I don't want that bottom piece. I want the, I mean, I want this bottom piece right here. So I'm just gonna turn it on its side. Do one more cut. To, there we go. Put that back in. There. And I just freeze this until I'm ready to use it um, on my next meal. So let me take these gloves off real quick and find a sheet pan. Sean, will you give me a sheet pan, please? A sheet pan? Yeah, go all the way at the bottom. This? Yeah. Let me find that. I thought I had that seasoning out already. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to put these just in my... Um, I'm gonna put these just on my cast iron and cook them, and then I will um, finish cooking them off in the... Sorry, I feel like I'm a little slow today. I'm so sorry, guys. What knife is that? That knife that I just used, I actually bought it on Amazon. It came with two of them. It's a certain name. And honestly, I can't remember the name. A wet knife? But, I don't know. but because it's, no, it's the blade, baby girl. Oh. Because of the way it's angled, these are my favorites. And as you can see, this one is from uh, Tasty, I think. And like I said, this one, I got this one with a smaller blue one, which I think it's in the dish. No, oh, didn't you get it with that whole party one? No, this one's a Tasty one, sorry. Yeah, I got this one. Because it came with like a. She's right, I did get a pack, and this one's a smaller one. So see, these are two different sizes. But this one I know I did get off of Amazon because I was looking for some one day, and I was like, okay, let me get some of these. And I love them, love them, love them, love them. They're really good. This one's dirty, so I'm going to show you with this. They're easy to handle, and it's got a good size blade, especially, like, like I said, for this size of meat and stuff that you're cutting. And then these little ones are really good for just little jobs and stuff. So, yes, thank you for asking, but th those are my favorite kind of blade. Hi, Rachel. Let me see. Sorry, guys, if I haven't seen. Hello, everybody that's on and joining me for dinner tonight or watching. And I am going to come back on later and show some wine. We're going to do our Wine Wednesday. We're just waiting for Julie to come home. She comes home at like 6. Post link. I will. I will definitely try to find it because it was a while back when I got them. So I will definitely try to um, find that for you. Yes, I know. I. I. So there's this place in um, here in Fort Worth, close to the Lake Worth area, or any kind of blade shop. Actually, this one's called House of Blades, and my brother actually took his um, blades to get sharp in there. I haven't done it because I just have my Hampton Forge um, knife set and I use this to sharpen it. And there is a certain way to sharpen knives. Um, you have to be careful, of course, if you're not used to using a knife. But you go down on both sides and it will sharpen pretty good. I tried to buy one of those little bitty ones where you just shove it in there and sharpen, but it didn't seem to get as sharp as when I use this. But like I said, you can go to a place and sh get them sharpened for you professionally. And my brother was like, you know, be careful. And I always had to be very careful because those knives were very, very sharp. So for these pork chops, like I, I'm going to use the grill mates. I love the grill mates. I don't know why I just do. I think it's because I don't have to search for what I want to put in the, the seasoning. But I do read the seasonings and see. And I smell them and just make sure it's something that I want to use. This one is an applewood rub, and I love it. It got like that apple wood and like sweet sugar taste and smell that it's delicious. So I'm just gonna, and I do season these really, really good. And I don't put salt and pepper on them. I just season them with this stuff, and that's it. And like I said, I'm gonna fry these in the um, cast iron, and then what I'm gonna do is. I just like to get that good little char on them 
and then I'll put them in um, the oven. Everybody's getting home right now because school's out and everybody's getting out of work, so excuse the traffic, but that's my crazy life, guys. Oh man, I wish y'all could smell this, and it's got huge, good chunks of just everything, and this has, this actually has a little bit of cinnamon, it says, too. It says spices include chili, pepper, red pepper, cinnamon, sugar, garlic, salt, molasses, onion, and then it includes applewood smoke, and apple cider vinegar, solid. So yeah. It's, it's a really good, um, I use this for my briskets when I do briskets as well, and it just, oh, I just love it, guys. I can go on and on about this seasoning. Like I said, I love using these pre-already mixed seasonings because it makes my job so much easier. I don't have to, oh, put this, this, and this, which I have, and I can. I'm not saying I don't know how, no. um, but this is just my favorite. Do you always use that one? I do use this one a lot for when I do pork and when I do um, brisket I will use it sometimes or I have some bris other brisket um, seasonings that I have which I'll have to do that one day make some brisket and show y'all but I wanted to kind of show y'all the seasoning and how I cut the pork because this makes my it, it's so much easier I know if you don't have a big family you can probably portion that out to like four meals and you save yourself a lot especially if you have the freezer space I to totally recommend getting a giant pork loin versus buying the little packages because I mean y'all have seen these in the little packages and they come with like maybe four or eight pieces depending on the size of the package <clears throat> and they cost almost three or four dollars for per pound sometimes even five dollars a pound this was a dollar ninety eight and I got this huge thing and it will last me for two different meals so this is what I do I just kind of make sure they're all evenly coated they are let me move this stuff real quick show you all this a little bit better and I'm just gonna let those hang out just let them hang out, let them marinate in that juice, let them sit there for a minute, and I'm actually going to put the other pork loin in another Ziploc bag because I don't like that I touch all this. Try to get your air out if you can. Alright, so I'm going to have baby girl take that to the freezer for me. We'll put it in the big one. Yes. So I do have a deep freeze. I have my refrigerator and then I have a small refrigerator for beverages. Okay, I told y'all I would have my hair down today, but it's kind of driving me nuts already, so I think I'm going to have to pick it up. So bear with me. Give me a sec. You look great today. So for Ooh. my scallop potatoes, I'm going to let this hang out while I'm doing the scallop potatoes. I used, I found this at Sam's. Y'all know me, guys. I love Sam's. It's called Sauce Blend, and these are brand new. I don't know if y'all can see that. I know it's kind of hard reading it backwards. This is white cheddar truffle mac and cheese. So it has directions on how to do it for mac and cheese. It says one and one-fourth cup of milk, three tablespoons of unsalted butter, one and a half cup of dry elbow pasta or macaroni, a fourth cup of this cheese sauce. So... I tasted it and it ta I can taste a little bit of the truffle and I can taste the white cheddar. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this instead of using full flour. I'm probably going to still make a little bit of a roux just because I'm used to doing a roux for my uh, potatoes or for my gravies and stuff like that just as a thickener. I'm still trying to work on it so don't bear with me with this recipe because it's going to be a new one. I already pre-cut and measured my cheeses. I bought this Munster cheese again, Sam's guys. It's sliced cheese, but my kids love this for sandwiches and grilled cheese. So I used about, I'm gonna use about 10 slices of this Munster cheese. And then I used a cup of my taco blend cheese, half of, a, of this, um, which is half 
of a box of cream cheese, which I used about four ounces, and I only used eight ounces of Velveeta, which is just barely like that much, I think. So those are the cheeses that I used. And I, in my pot, I have four tablespoons of butter. So I'm gonna turn on my pot to get that butter warm. And while that's going, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my cast iron. I'm gonna turn the camera around to you guys, hold on. Sorry, again, bear with me. Mama. Mom. Yes, baby girl. Um, I gave um, Julie some Skittles because I asked her what's her favorite. And I gave her some, and she said one of her kids um, stole it. <gasps> she didn't know if it was a boy or girl. She didn't know who it was. All right, so here's my pot. And I got four tablespoons of butter going in there. Baby girl, will you hand me the flour, please? Yeah. Is it in one of those? Yes. Yeah. All my utensils are over here. It's the one under the brown, the round one. I have tons of these whisks, and I go back to the same one because I like this one. Can I do it? All right, so like I said, I'm just going to use maybe like two tablespoons of flour. This was four tablespoons of butter. Again, this was I got this whisk at uh, one of those restaurant quality stores, and I they ended up closing it down, and they moved to somewhere else. So I need to go back and get another one because I've bought other whisks, and they just don't work the same. So I cut the butter up so it could melt a little quicker. Like I said, I'm going to use probably about two tablespoons of that. And I am going to use milk for this recipe because we need milk in here. So let's get that going. And I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, so these directions say mix, uh, mix in butter, milk, cheese mix, and bring it to a simmer. So it doesn't say that I have to cook it with the butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just let that cook for a second while I grab my milk. Like I said, I am experimenting with this recipe, so bear with me. I know, you hear all this smashing around? I'm gonna use one and a half of cups of milk, and I'm gonna go ahead and use some heavy cream, because I have some. If I didn't have any, then I wouldn't use it, but I have some, so let me go ahead and use a little bit. So that made like a total of two cups that I'm gonna pour in here. And again, when you pour it in, you wanna go in slow, Stir that in. I already see it thickening a little bit. Pour a little more in. Pour a little more in. You just this is a slow process, guys. I'm sorry. I know it's we want to hurry sometimes for dinner. But once it gets to the, a certain creamy consistency, then you can pour the rest of your milk in. Let me turn down the heat on this. Honestly, again, I don't know how many potatoes I made, but it's pretty much a, um, a whole colander full. Pour the rest of that milk in there. So that was four tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, and four, two cups of, um, well, one and a half cup of milk and half a cup of heavy cream. So I'm going to let that get a little warm. Like I said, I already told you all the cheeses that I have, and I'll incorporate that after I add this uh, little bit of seasoning. Have any of you guys made au gratin potatoes besides the box kind? <laughs> Hi guys, whoever's on right now, thanks for watching. Love that y'all are supporting me and watching me. It means so much, guys, y'all have no idea. So like I said, this is a little bit of a slower process versus cutting, the, um, cutting up the vegetables and cutting up everything and stuff like that, so. 
I'm going to go ahead and get my cast iron pan starting to get warm for the pork chops. And this isn't going to thicken as much because we didn't put a lot of flour in it. Like I said, I'm going to put some of this. It says a fourth of a cup, so I think I might go ahead and do a whole fourth of a cup. If I could find my fourth of a cup. Here it is. Yeah, that's a fourth. You're probably thinking, well, you're spilling some of it. That's okay because I, I used a little more butter. So that's probably about a fourth. Put that in. It smells pretty good. And it looks like it has some good seasoning in it too. And as you make this, you might see that you might need more milk or more cheese and that that's okay you can add more or less or whatever so I'm gonna slowly add some of this cheese so I'm gonna start melting I know it's sliced cheese but it's Munster guys I don't know if y'all have ever had Munster so growing up you know we just got used to just cheddar cheese or just regular cheese just Kraft or Borden whatever or the generic kind as I got older, I started expanding and started trying ju just different things like different vegetables, different cheeses, just everything, just to, to see what I like, what I don't like. So honestly, I love Havarti cheese, Baby Swiss, Munster, and um, there's a few other ones that I can't think of right now. So this is going to turn down a little bit. Like I said, I put a mixture of stuff because I didn't know how. I'm trying to get this cream cheese on here because for some reason cream cheese just makes it so good. So it is starting to thicken up and I am going to probably add a little more milk because I don't want it too thick, but I want it, you know, kind of runny because it will, you know, once I put the potatoes in there and stuff. I'm gonna put it in the oven and it's gonna cook some more. Some more. That sounds like I'm saying s'mores, sorry. So far it's looking good. Very cheesy. Let's go ahead and add the rest of this. And I'm gonna go ahead and add another half a cup of milk. So I can kind of remember I'm doing it in half. I'm going to add another half a cup of heavy cream. So then that would be a total of two cups of milk and one cup of heavy cream. You can add some seasoning to this, but honestly with all that cheese, I don't think you really need to. And with this, it actually has... Um, salt, it has Parmesan cheese, black pepper, dehydrated onion, and some other stuff. And then it has dehydrated truffle, which I, I don't know if y'all have ever had truffle, macaroni and cheese. Oh my God. I had it for the first time maybe last year and it was delicious. So you want to make a good cheese sauce, especially for your au gratins, you know. And I've seen people make au gratins differently, or if you want to call them scalloped potatoes. Um, <clears throat> I've seen people boil them a little bit. I don't want to do that because I still want them to kind of maintain their whole shape. So I'm going to just layer them in the pan and then put some cheese sauce, layer another layer, put some more cheese sauce, kind of like just a casserole and throw them in there and I have some breadcrumbs so I might sprinkle some on top. My, sorry, my other stove keeps wanting to turn on. Still looking a little clumpy because there's still a lot of cheese that's starting to melt down. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on my, um, my pork while that's going in. I got some olive oil. The 
this pan is very heavy, guys, and one side is already hot, so let's use this to try to coat the whole thing. This I got for, I think I've told you, I got it for Christmas one year for my nephew. It's a 16, 16 inch. I love it. It's my favorite pan. It's very heavy, though. I hate picking it up, for sure. Yeah, that's looking pretty good and very cheesy. Alright, so let's go ahead and get my pork over here. And this, because this is what I was going to put the stuff in. Let me put that in the sink. I had a bunch of tongs, guys, and I don't know what happened to them which irritates me sometimes because I can't find stuff. But, you know, sometimes the kids wash dishes and I have no idea where stuff goes. So, let's go ahead and, like I said, I'm just looking for a good crust on this. And what I mean by a good crust, I want it to get that little bit of kind of like browning char on it. Oh man, I wish y'all could smell this. It smells amazing. I don't think I can fit all of them in here, so let's just do those. It smells amazing, guys. That If you've never tried the Applewood seasoning with any kind of... I think you can use it on anything, really, but I prefer it on pork. I don't know why. It says you can use it on pork, chicken, beef, or seafood, coat genu uh, a genu generously with, with the rub before grilling. And like I said, these, normally I would grill them, but I just I haven't been in the mood to grill outside. I don't know why. Cheese sauce is still looking pretty good. It's starting to get more cheesier. I might have to add a little bit more milk. To thin it out a little bit because it is very cheesy. This is good for macaroni and cheese as well. Normally I don't taste my food either as I'm cooking because I kind of just pray to God it's going to taste okay and everything is going to work out. But with this one, I am going to try it just because like I said I used a new one and they had another one too. This one I just saw a truffle and I was like, oh, I want to try that one. Um, again, I just seen these at Sam's. And I just grabbed it, picked it up. Let me try another little half cup of milk. Yeah, that's good. You don't want it too thick because it might just clump up. I want it run a little runny enough that it's going to um, coat all those potatoes. You know? Like I said, if you have pasta that you want to make with this, you definitely just make your pasta, throw it in there with it, and oh, I bet it's delicious. Also, another reason I don't want to put any seasoning is because I did use that taco blend of uh, cheese. And it has, I don't know, you can't see it, but I can. I can see the little specks of um, pepper and chilies and stuff like that on here. Put those cook a little bit more. I'm going to turn up the heat just a little bit on that. You want it to be pretty runny. See how it's, sorry, I thought y'all can see that. See how it's running pretty steadily? That's pretty much what I'm looking for right there. And because it's for my family, I can do this. Oh yeah, you can taste that. Um, I just used a fourth of this compared to this big pot and I could taste that truffle and stuff. It's pretty good. All right, so that's done. Let me turn that off. Put these cheeses up. 
and the milk. It may look like I'm unorganized, but I'm pretty organized, guys, so just bear with me a minute. You grabbed your blanket already. Go, yeah. Tell Cheyenne to give it to you. These knives I did not use, so they're going back in the drawer. All right. <coughs> Excuse, me. <coughs> Excuse me. I think that cheese sauce went down the wrong way. I can still kind of taste it. <coughs> and even though this is off, I'm still going to continuously stir it just because I don't want it to burn. And I'm going to take it off of the heat, bring it over here with my potatoes. And I actually prefer to cook on this burner, so I'm going to turn this one off and turn this one back on. All right, while that's cooking, <coughs> let's start layering our, um, our gratins. And this probably made quite a bit and I mean that in the sense that I might have to use two pans hopefully y'all can see that I might have to use two of these pans <clears throat> like I said I cut up red and white so I'm just gonna kind of mix them all up in here I've seen people do them differently and they put onion in this which I should have probably did that I bet it would be pretty good Maybe I should cut up some onion. Give me a second, guys. Let's do the whole thing. Shebang, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go grab... Grab my onion. And I have some. So, I meant to do it and I forgot until I just remembered that they said they did that. So let me get my slicer thing again. Rinse it off real quick. some even slices like I did the other one so I'm probably gonna stay with the same size which I think I used a three <coughs> I do need another knife Let me grab the little one the little guy just cutting off the ends and peeling as I cut I don't know if y'all have a particular way of cutting and I don't know if y'all cry when y'all cut onions, but I do, and I hate it. Hi guys, if y'all are just joining, I'm making some au gratin potatoes from scratch with uh, no recipe, just kind of winging it. All right, so let's cut. Let me put something. careful with this thing because I don't want to hurt myself and see how see that how they look so I thought y'all can see that and I don't want to use too much onion but I want enough that's a good amount to start with I'm put some of those in there and kind of swippity swap I'm excited to see how this uh, gratin, my eyes are already starting to tear up, guys. <laughs> I'm not crying, you're crying. Have y'all heard that before? Just kidding, guys. I want to do a good layer. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you are a perfectionist, by all means, do it um, 
do a couple layers and then go from there. I'm going to check on my pork real quick because I could smell them cooking pretty good. Oh yeah, I'll show you on just a second once I start doing these layers. One of my broken ladles, <laughs> but I'm going to use that to ladle. And I want a good amount just so that way you can taste and get every little bit in there. Probably should have layered some at the bottom. Just kind of working it with this Thing, making sure that all these potatoes got the got some of it. <clears throat> all right, let's work on another layer. I think I overdid the potatoes, but like I said, I can do two pans of this. And if y'all have ever seen me cook, um, like when I do those, um, man, my eyes are really watering still. If you've ever seen me do like the lasagna or. Um, my spaghetti I do small pans and then I freeze the other batch and make it for another time and I just it's super easy because you have an extra meal for some other night that you're not feeling good and you just want something quick to pop in the oven let's do a couple more onions I think I could probably do another layer after this one man those onions if y'all know a trick to not cry when you cut onions please let me know because my eyes are tearing up really bad so bella's telling me why we cry she learned it in science. She said that when onions are looking for a water source, I guess they get it from our tear ducts, and our ducts produce the tears, so I guess that's what it's doing. She said put a wet towel under the onion. I've heard, actually I did hear that you can uh, wet your onion. And I think I have done that, but I, I was just trying to hurry up today, so so that way y'all can, I know these, I try not to make these videos long, guys, I promise you, I try, really try not to, but I've seen some of the videos where, you know, they rush through and they do the rewind and stuff, but I'm just not like that, I guess, I just, I want y'all to see every step I, and whatnot, because I've seen those, and honestly, I hate when they fast forward it, because sometimes I'm like, well, what did they do? I mean, did they did they take that? How long did they cook it? Or you know, you have questions, and I I guess that's why I don't like to um, to see those like that. So that's why I do these lengthy videos. And I'm sorry if they're taking a lot of time, which I'm sure they are. So I only made enough cheese sauce for this one pan. So. I still have quite a few potatoes left, so I'm going to put those in a maybe Ziploc bag or container with some water and let those um, hang out for maybe tomorrow or something. Maybe I'll make something else with them. I don't know yet. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this sauce. <coughs> And add all of it to this. All right. So that's the scallop there. I'm just kind of working it a little bit. Oh yeah, that looks good. So I'm probably going to go ahead and cover this and let it bake in the oven at, um, we'll do 325. No, 350. We'll do 350. I was thinking 425, that's why I said the 25. But I'll probably bake it at 350, maybe 375. I'll figure it out once I put it in the oven, sorry. Then I'm going to cover it and let it cook. And then once they're more or less close to being tender, 
I'm going to uncover it and throw some breadcrumbs on it and then pop it back in there for like another 10 or 15 minutes. <clears throat> so, let's turn the oven on. <coughs> Excuse me. I tell you, this stuff is just like crazy. All right, so let's turn back and look at the pork. Can y'all see it? I hope. And this pan does get hot, so be careful with the handle. And if you, my kids are older, <coughs> so I don't need to worry as much. <laughs> but you see how they got really good crusting on it? That's what I wanted right there. Just for them to have that good crust on it and lock in that flavor. And I'm gonna let these kind of cook on their sides. <coughs> I almost thought about cooking these on the, um, my grill thing outside. But I think I only want to use that for when I'm doing um, like a lot of different food. Since this is just pork that I'm doing today, this pan works just fine. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is finish these off. Once they're done, I'm going to probably cover this cast iron pan because it can go in the oven. One of the beauties of having a cast iron pan, you can use it from the stove to the oven. So once these are done, I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, cover it, throw it in the oven with the rottens and let my, my meal finish cooking. And that's it. And I'm going to jump back on in a little bit to do my wine Wednesday because I've been craving this wine since last week and I didn't get to do it. So I'm going to let them finish, put those in there, and hopefully everything will be done in maybe about an hour because these are still not done. They're still got some... They need to cook a little bit longer, but that's why I throw them in the oven. I just want to get that nice little crust on them. And trust me, guys, they come out really tender. Anyways, so let me let those finish cooking. This smoke is kind of getting to me a little bit. But I'm going to let those finish cooking, finish cooking the au gratin and get all that done. And like I said, I'll jump back on in a little bit to do my wine Wednesday. And I hope some of y'all join me because I bought some wine from Sam's, of course, my favorite store. And um, I think my nephew and his girlfriend are going to join me. So we'll try those in a little bit. But thank you guys for watching. And again, I'll jump on later, later again and show y'all the finished product of what the gratin potatoes look like and what the pork looks like when I cut it. So thank you guys again. Love y'all. And I'll see y'all soon. Bye.